Hey everyone, it's Michael with Pocket Now, and today we're doing a quick comparison of two leading LTE Android smartphones, the HTC One X on AT&T's network and the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on Verizon's LTE network. We're going to compare specs, build quality, display, UI performance, and camera, and let you know which one you should think of buying if you're on the fence. Okay, these phones are separated by about six months as far as release dates go, so we're obviously going to see some differences in specs under the hood. Now, the LTE version of the Galaxy Nexus is working with a TI OMAP dual core processor clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. It also packs a gig of RAM and 32 gigs of storage space, 28 of which are available to the user. On the other hand, the LTE version of the One X features a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. It's got the same 1 gig of RAM, but only 16 gigs of storage. Only 12 of that is available to the user. So if you need a lot of memory, you can stop right there. The Galaxy Nexus is going to be the device for you. But if you're the type who stores a lot of content in the cloud, or if you just don't need a lot of storage space for whatever reason, it's still anybody's game. Let's check out the build quality. After carrying the One X as my daily driver for about a week, going back to the Galaxy Nexus was quite a shift. It almost feels thick in the hand, much more like a rounded stone than the flat shingle of the One X. The casing is only slightly smaller than the One X, but it fits much better in the hand, probably because of its increased thickness. It doesn't feel like a giant phone, while the One X really, really does by comparison. On the other hand, the materials on the One X are just incredible. As I said in the review, it's almost like holding a piece of futuristic chalk rather than plastic. The polycarbonate casing, along with the clean lines and the unique design, just blows away the generic look of the Galaxy Nexus, which looks okay, but feels almost chintzy by comparison. But the casing is only as important as what it surrounds. The Galaxy Nexus is rocking a 4.65-inch Super AMOLED, while the One X has a 4.7-inch Super LCD 2. There's really no room for subjectivity here. Unless you have bad eyesight, it's pretty clear that the One X display just destroys the panel on the Galaxy Nexus. Now, they're both 720p displays with excellent deep blacks and much more vibrant colors than you're going to get on older LCD panels. The One X's SLCD2 with the RGP pixel arrangement delivers better whites, whereas on the Galaxy Nexus, the whites appear a lot more like a wet newspaper because of that pentile Super AMOLED. And HTC has really showcased that superior color performance with a lot of the animations available in the HTC Sense. Also, because the Galaxy Nexus uses the soft keys in stock ICS, you're losing a bunch of pixels at the bottom of the display. Now, the One X doesn't usually have that problem, thanks to its capacitive keys here. So, though its display is really only maybe a 20th of an inch bigger, its usable area is significantly larger much of the time. Speaking of stock ICS, these two devices offer radically different software experiences. As Google's flagship Nexus device, the Galaxy Nexus offers stock ICS, and the One X does as well. But the One X is running Sense 4 on top of Android, so that changes the experience measurably. In practice, this means that even though HTC has lightened up a lot in Sense, you're still going to get more glitz and more trim on the One X than on the Galaxy Nexus. That's all very pretty, but it does weigh down the experience a bit, especially sometimes when you jump out of an app and Sense has to reload all of its widgets when you hop back to the home screen. And as I discussed in my full review, the Sense keyboard is probably one of the worst I've used for English typing, even though it looks pretty and very inviting with its big keys. The stock experience, on the other hand, while possessing much less visual flair, is just much more responsive and snappy, and it's much more apt to just work, in my experience. Sure, it's less exciting, but its minimalism is quite appealing, and the keyboard is phenomenal. Finally, HTC is making a lot of noise about the supposed amazing camera on the One X. Well, how does that measure up to reality? In short, pretty well. The saturation is a little higher than what most people will be used to, and the low light performance could be better. But the One X's camera delivers better results than the shooter in the Galaxy Nexus. Not just because of the 8 megapixel versus 5 megapixel difference either, 
The software is what really gives the One X the leg up over the Galaxy Nexus, allowing users to shoot still shots in video and take up to 20 shots in quick succession. Also, this unified viewfinder is a real time saver. By contrast, and we've talked about this before, the Galaxy Nexus is a disappointment in the camera department. While the camera software on stock ICS is very clean and quick, and I really like the built-in panorama mode, the sensor's performance is very disappointing. Colors are reproduced somewhat more accurately than the One X, but everything is cast in a slightly gray pallor. It's almost like you're shooting through a fine mist, especially in low light. The edge definitely goes to the One X here. So, they're both beastly devices with some of the best specs you can get on the two largest networks in the United States. Now, the Galaxy Nexus has been available for some time. It's available now on Verizon Wireless for $199.99 on contract. And the One X will be available starting May 6th on AT&T for the same price, or you can get it for cheaper if you pre-order at certain locations. So which one to get? Well, both devices have flagship specs, and certainly coverage and your carrier choice is going to make some of that decision for you. But if you're looking for a better camera experience, ultra-modern design, an amazing display, and much better battery life, then the HTC One X is going to be the way to go for you. On the other hand, if you want a more solid, more fluid user experience, with the probability of somewhat more timely updates from Google, the Galaxy Nexus is going to be the way to go for you. That's it for now. This has been Michael with Pocket Now. Give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Speaking of stock ICS, these two phones offer incredibly f motorcycles, man. Get a bicycle. No offense if you ride one. <laughs>